Hello everyone, welcome to Ashley Lancelot Show. Today is we are gonna be I picked the monster out. It'd be the Pathfinder Bestiary, uh Pathfinder 2 Bestiary. Uh this is gonna be in page 66. You can find a link on it on Google. Um see some of the monsters that's there, stats, everything else if you don't own it. Um just you know, just Google it. You probably see a lot of these already leaked and stuff. A lot of times you don't even need a book. A lot of times you have us just basically explaining what you can do with them as well. So usually I go around books and everything, little things and bits and pieces as well. I haven't fully read the Pathfinder 2 book, but I'll do a full review very soon uh, for that matter of fact. But is there any particular subject you guys want me to go in more depth or talk more about? Please put down a link below, I mean comment down below and I will... Um, look at it and I will make a video for you about that as well um, you know I'm not the best D&D &D player or the best uh, DM or GM uh, depending on what game it is but I have more of knowledge at 20 plus years of playing a damn game and DMing a damn game uh, it's a very it's a very, very fun thing um, everyone should know this if you ever played D&D &D. uh, I have never when I was a player, I never actually faced one of these. But uh, when I when I when I started DM, I actually used a few of these. These are one of the nastiest thing. Just I remember looking at this an AD and D book events uh, AD and D, and I didn't. And, and from then, I, I always thought about them as you know they're basically demonic chickens, demonic roosters. It is the cockatrice. <laughs> In page 66, if you have the book, if not, I'm going to read what it is, the stats, what you can do with them as well. Uh, basically, uh, I just say <laughs> the reason why they're demonic chickens is because they're small and they can do a pretty powerful damage for beginner players as well. I talk more about beginner players and setting up stuff as well uh, due to the fact that, you know, a lot of times to start a DN, to start a game, you want to have a good start adventure. And a good ending as well. In the middle is where all the chaos happens. But I like to start the beginning, then get more, a little more powerful, powerful, powerful monsters after that later on down the road. But we'll start with the cockatrice. Uh, if you want me to talk about the, uh, the 3.5 Fifth Edition Pathfinder One, compare it. Let me know in the comments below, and uh, we I can do that video as well. I'm about to do it. Um, reason why I haven't is that I have. A lot of things on my plate <laughs> but pretty soon i will prepare book by book um but it's gonna be like a 30 40 minute video if i do that uh, just letting you guys know um just picking one monster out and just talking about from this book It'll take about 10 15 minute video and that matter of fact cockatrice ugly and aggressive the dread cockatrice stalks garbage pits and hillside bumps in the search of prey that it can turn to stone when it, uh, with its uh, petrifying beak. Substantially consume peace by broken peace. Cockatrice resemble gaunt and sticky, uh, sickly roosters with bat wings and serpentine tail. And they rarely grow more than two feet tall. And twice as long. Uh, they're uh, uh, asset, asset minded, clucking, give smart prey. Ample warning of their presence and when angry cockatrice let out a churl crow like that of a rooster. Their peak released a magical toxin that caused flesh to quickly calcify and any creature pecked repeatedly by an irritable, uh, irritable, irritable, I'm sorry, I can't pron uh, my pronunciation that good. I know I'm wearing my glasses on, so right now, cockatrice eventually transformed into a stone statue of itself. So you can turn your their prey into stone, or if it pecks itself, you can turn itself into stone. Uh, first, cockatrice is rumored to have hatched from a rooster egg incubated of a dung hill by a toad. Whether or not the rumor is true, cockatrice monster's appearance certainly doesn't contradict a strange and filthy origin story. These creatures are more than capable of um, protagonating on their own cockatrice are remarkable fessund f-e-c-u-n-d -E i don't know how to pronounce that i probably should look that look this up before i make this but oh well i just said that i just 
gave me that letter of the words. You can correct me what it means down the link uh, down in the comment below. And gather in flocks of up to a dozen pairs from the female by having warty wattles and gnarled cones often fight with each other with lower ranking males eventually driving away to find their own lair or complete among other flocks most creatures who run afoul of a solitary cockatrice do so with one of these surely outcasts cockatrice lair are often littered with fragments of statuary from past victims although these are likely to be remnants of frogs lizards and insects as people curiously weasel and fair who infiltrate cockatrice lair to steal uh, their eggs are immune to the creature's petrifying bite, but for unknown reason, cockatrices are both terrified and enraged by com uh, conventional roosters, and they are equally likely to flee or attack when confronted by one. Particularly brave or foolhardy individuals sometimes keep cockatrices as pets or guard animals in their natural habitat among plain forests and sewers in humanoid settlements. Cockatrices are Content to live off vermin for a scrap of waste, but their greatest pleasure is consuming warm meals of freshly petrified flesh. And then, and this is a good thing because it tells you, you know, the treasure and the resource location where you can put this in as well. I'm gonna read the cockatrice treasure. Cockatrice layers sometimes include discard gear from past victims or smooth, pretty stone. Uh, discarded uh, from the creature's claws, gems, workers, especially prized precious stone that have been polished to perfection in a cockatrice coop and may pay high price for the so-called cockatrice rock. Soft material is suitable for nesting such as cloth and leather rarely survive a cockatrice's attention but metal goods are often left in, the, left in fine working order. So you will not find any pet leather armor, so the pet leather armor may, may not or any kind of organic matter, so metal will still survive. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is a magical item, it's a different story. Let's see. Uh, order, since Cockatrice seems to have little interest in anything shiny, they can't fit in their gullet. Okay. This is a creature uh, of a challenge rating of three. I'm happy they put a challenge rating on the top. I think one fifth dish they put on the bottom, so you gotta literally skim through it down. So it's a challenge rating three. So for this, you're not gonna put this in a level one campaign. You may have, if you may put, put like one or two cockatrice, you have be a party of five to five to five to eight level one players for that one. But I was you wait till you have a a level two, a level two of. Three to four, I would say. You put uh, like three cockatrice, see how it goes. But I you have one, to have one flee, they're doing really good, and have another flock of them coming over at them. That's how I would do with the cockatrice as well. These are just ugly looking roosters, so, you know. If you never have been around with chickens or roosters, uh, watch some videos about them. They're, they're, they're a hole creatures, in my opinion. I actually got chased by one when she was a kid when she told me. They have a plus eight at dark vision. No, oh, sorry, plus eight in perception. Dark vision. Acrobats, acrobatic skills plus 11. Oh, so they actually kept the, uh, the, the skills. That's actually pretty good. Looks like uh, they have a minus two deck. Minus two, sorry, strength. They're pretty weak. Dexterity is plus four. Con is plus one. Intelligence plus minus three. And wisdom plus one. Charisma is minus one. Yeah, 45 health. Immunity to calcification, so they cannot petrify themselves. Uh, their speed is 20. Fly is 40. Their beak does plus 13. Holy shit. <laughs> Probably want to have a, try have one of them for level two because plus thirteen a lot of time ACs for level one and two their their range from gonna be around twelve to sixteen to eighteen for a armor class. Um, yeah, you might want to have a tank go at this first so the long range can kill it. Um, the damage one d eight minus two piercing uh, plus calcification. You gotta roll a uh, a peck a calcification. It says here is a a peck from your cockatrice hardens the flesh of the creature struck. The target must see a DC twenty fortitude save or become slowed one or slowed two on a critical failure. Uh, 
So they ha looks like there is a two save method in this game. I will have to look it up. Um, further failed save, uh, Gantt Conservation increased the slow condition. Once the creature action is reduced to zero by calcification, uh, that creature becomes petrified. Every 24 hour after it was petrified, the victim can attempt a DC 24 to save to recover. On its success, it becomes flesh again, but it is slow one for the next. Uh, so you 24 hours on a, on a critical success, the uh, creature recovers and isn't a, a slow. On a failure, the creature remains petrified, but can try again another 24 hours. On a critical failure, the petrification is permanent, and creature can attempt any more saves. So if you roll a natural one, you turn to uh, stone. But it looks like it has a two save system. Uh, you know, if you save the first time, great. Uh, they will slow down. And the second time you do it, fails. You'll still turn to stone, but every 24 hours, uh, you might make two successful saves, so you won't be turned to stone. Every, but every 24 hours, you can succeed on it. Then, uh, if you fail a second time, you can go back to stone and wait another 24 hours for that as well. So that is weird how to do the saves for this. And I like the critical failure, what will happen as well. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, usually, I think 3.5 and 5th edition, you do it once, and that's pretty much it on their uh, Constitution save. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe, like, and share. Any more monsters that you want to see if that's in here or not. Remember, a lot of the monsters' name that is similar to the Pathfinder and D&D are kind of different. Um, there's a couple examples I can't think of the top of my head, but um, mine, there's Mind Flayer 5th edition. There's a different, it's a Mind Flayer just like in the Pathfinder, but it's, it's in a different name. I forget what it was. Um, so yeah, just letting you guys know. Um, and let me know and I'll read it. Sorry. I'll wear my glasses next time and I won't drink too much coffee when I do the next time for it. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.